Hi, and welcome to the Gospel Channel, a channel where we seek to encourage ourselves in the Lord, a channel where we propagate the Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we greet you all in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank and bless his name for another opportunity to uh, come and study and to know of his word. We started on inspiration of the Holy Scriptures in our, in our last episode. And uh, for a scripture reading, we read from the epistle of Timothy, second epistle of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16, which reads, All scripture is God breath. That means that it's given by divine inspiration and is profitable for instruction for conviction of sin, for correction of error and restoration to obedience, for training in righteousness, learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage. So in our last episode, we saw that holy men of God were moved to write or to pen down these divine words from God. They didn't write it from their own reasoning, but they were moved, they were inspired to pen down this counsel of God which he wanted man to know. We also learned that there were about 40 people from diverse backgrounds who wrote uh, the Holy Scriptures in that they didn't know themselves. Different people, holy men of God from diverse places wrote and they did not contradict each other. Why? Because God is not the utter of confusion. He wanted his counsel to be known unto his creation. And so he inspired these men to pen down that which alone he wants them to know. And so we are blessed to have a time like this again. And we are going to continue from where we left off. And so, we want to see the inspiration of the scriptures in the Old Testament. For we all know that the Old Testament is a shadow of the New Testament. And we know that they all foreshadow the coming Messiah. And we all know that the main theme of the Bible is about the Lord Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. God and Moth revealing his, uh, himself unto man in time, according to how he wants to be known. And in, in these last days, he's revealing himself in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the fulfillment of the Old Testament scriptures. And so we want to see how the Old Testament uh, prophets or writers attested of the inspiration that was found in the Word of God. In 2 Samuel chapter 23, from verse 2 to 3, it reads, The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, 
and his word was on my tongue. The God of Israel, the rock of Israel, spoke to me. He who rules over men righteously, he who rules in the fear of God. So again, we see prophet Samuel testifying to the fact that the spirit of the Lord spoke by him. And the Lord put his word in his tongue to speak. And he couldn't help than to speak it. So this is an example of how the scriptures were inspired in the Old Testament. And also the prophet Isaiah also wrote and said in Isaiah chapter 59 verse 21, As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit is upon you, writing the law of God in your heart, and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, from your mouths of your true spiritual children, nor from the mouth of your children's children, says the Lord, from, from now and forever. Isaiah, one of the major prophets of the Old Testament, who uh, prophesied and wrote extensively of the coming Messiah, also testified to the fact that the Old Testament were inspired from the Almighty God. And that God put uh, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, writing the law of God in the heart of his spiritual children. And that counsel was handed over from generation unto generation. In uh, Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 33, Romans chapter 11 verse 26, Galatians chapter 3 verse 29, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22 to 24, all testify, all pointed to the fact that it was the spirit of the Lord which was upon the Old Testament prophets and they wrote the counsel of God unto the children of Israel. And so we also see in the life of Jeremiah, one of the Old Testament prophets who even before he was born, God ordained him to be a prophet unto the nations, even in his mother's womb. Also testify of the inspiration of the scriptures. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, it reads, Then the Lord stretched out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. I have put my words in your mouth. So here again, Prophet Jeremiah also attested to the fact that the inspiration that the gods in the Old Testament was from the Spirit of the Lord. It was the Spirit of the Lord that, you know, fell upon them, that touched them, that put the word in their mouth to speak, and then they speak it with all authority unto the children of Israel. And so we see that there are so many instances in the Old Testament where we come across the phrase, Thus says the Lord. Hundreds of instances, Thus says the Lord. And we all know that in, during the days of the children of Israel, they so much revered their prophet. And the high priest 
had what we call the urine tumin on the breastplate of him. And any man of God, any prophet of God that prophesies and it does not flash on the urine to me, then that prophecy is false. And so if a man of God prophesied, says that thou says the Lord, and it doesn't come to pass, such an one is stoned to death. And so we see that they very much revered that says the Lord. And that is also an example of inspiration from the Old Testament. What about our Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ of whom the prophet of old prophesied came and walked the shores of Galilee proclaiming the gospel of the good news said I have come to fulfill and not to destroy. He also in several instances testified or affirmed the inspiration of the Old Testament uh, scriptures. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 18, we read that, we read, For I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke of the pen will pass from the law until all things which it foreshadows are accomplished. Until all things which it foreshadows are accomplished. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The word of the Lord will not return unto himself void, but it will accomplish the purpose of which the word was sent. You know, so that is the, the, the inspiration contained in the word of God in the Old Testament. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 40, 42 to 44, we read of uh, Apostle Matthew uh, describing how the Lord Jesus Christ confronted the religious le re uh, leaders of his day, most especially the Pharisees. And this is what he said unto them. What do you Pharisees think of the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, whose son is he? Then they answered and said, the son of David. Then Jesus asked them, saying, how is it then that David, by the inspiration of the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. Here we see the Lord Jesus Christ quoting Psalm 110 verse 1, of which King David, you know, I mean by inspiration, spoke and wrote down in the Psalms. The Lord, the Father of all spirits, say to my Lord, the Son, the Messiah, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. So here again, we see that the Lord Jesus Christ was affirming the inspiration that can be found in the Old Testament. And so, we also see that the Lord Jesus Christ, here on his mission here on earth, chose certain uh, persons to receive and witness to the revelation contained in the scriptures. He chose the 12 apostles, 
and even during his day he chose the the, the 70 he commissioned them to go and preach uh, the gospel and then before he left here on earth he commanded them by saying in Matthew 28 verse 19 go therefore and make disciples of all nations help the people to learn of me believe in me and obey my words baptizing them in the name of the father the son and of the holy spirit now how were they to do that they will only do that and be witnesses to the revelation when they were endured from power from on high he commanded them to go and wait in the city of Jerusalem until they were endued with power from on high. And a lot of people also read this uh, portion of scripture, Matthew 28 verse 19, and say, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, commanded his disciples to go and baptize the people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then they jump into conclusion and say, God is a trinity. But there is also another portion of scripture which states that, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. The Lord thy God is one Lord. Now, Father is not a name. I am a father. My name is... It's not father. I have a son. My, my son's name is not son. And the Holy Spirit is not a name. The Bible also says in another, another portion of scripture and said, Hear yeah, uh, and everything you do in way or in, in, in deed, do it in the name of the Lord. And there is no name given among men whereby we might, might be saved, except the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So here we see that the name of the Lord, the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is the Lord Jesus Christ. Is the Lord Jesus Christ. In John chapter 5, verse 27, it reads, But you will testify also and be my witnesses because you have been with me from the beginning. The, the apostles upon which the Lord built his church, he chose them from the beginning. And then uh, he you know, said they will be his witnesses to uh, the witnesses to the revelation contained in the scriptures we spoke about the Lord Jesus Christ so he told them that they will be witnesses of him and lo and behold on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost fell they started that ministry Paul and Peter and the eleven stood up and preached that powerful message and so many people were saved on that day in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 we read that but you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses to tell people about me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. And that is exactly what we are. We at ambassadors of Christ are doing, trying to make known the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to all people, because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we want to make his words known unto this generation. And so, we will bring our sharing here to a close. Thank you so much for this short time with me. May the Lord richly bless you and 
and uh, thank you and may, may the Lord enlarge your coast and bless you and bless whatever you are doing until we come your way again with the gospel bite we say shalom and amen we will also entreat you to visit our blog www.ambassadorsforchrist where we have other contents which will be of a blessing unto you may the lord jesus christ be the desire of your heart stay tuned and amen